All right, on to the next one. Next thing we're going to be building is this little button down here. Um, it's a relatively large button. I'd say it's approximately this size. And you can see that we've got this icon on the left. We've got this text that says reverse currencies. And when you actually tap it, what's going to happen is it will switch the base currency, which in this case is USD, and the quote currency, which in this case is GBP. Um, and all that it's going to be is just a clear button. We'll use a touch full opacity to actually build it. Um, pretty straightforward, so let's go ahead and dive in. For this component, I'll be setting up a new component directory, and this time I'm going to be calling it button. Just like our text input, a this application could potentially have multiple buttons, so we'll just kind of set up a generic button component directory and inside of there we will set up our standard files so we've got our index.js styles.js and finally we will set up a clear button.js which will actually represent the button we're building now inside of here we'll do the standard uh, import clear button from clear button and then we will import styles from styles and then go ahead and export those. Now we'll go ahead and set up our style sheet. So we're going to say eStyle sheet eight. And we'll go ahead and actually write that later. Um, another thing we need to do is actually add a few image assets. If we look here, we've got this small icon and rather than using the logo one, we'll just use a smaller one here um, for this specific component. And I've already copied the images which are available to you down below. And I'm going to go ahead and actually open this in Finder just so I can paste the images in here. Um, you can see here we've got three images and they're just these icons that we've had before. So now we can actually go ahead and start setting up our component. First thing we need to do is import React from React. And then looking at this, uh, the way we're going to structure this is we're going to have a touchable opacity on the outside which will wrap the entirety of the component. And inside of there, we'll have a view which will actually set up a few of the styles inside of it. I try to avoid setting styles to uh, touchable elements just because it's kind of inconsistent the way they work between different platforms and different touchable uh, components. So I just try to put a view inside of them that actually has the style. And then inside of there, we've got this icon which will use the image component. And here we've just got this text component. So with that in mind, we can go ahead and start importing our touchable opacity view, text, and image. And we're also going to import styles from our style sheet. Then we can say const clear button is going to be a stateless component. We'll just return null for right now. And then we can say export default clear button. So like I said before, let's go ahead and actually start setting things up. First thing, we're going to have that touch below opacity on the outside. And then inside of there, we will have our view, which we'll apply some styles to. And then in there, we're going to have our image component. And we'll just go ahead and set the source now. And we'll do that by saying require dot forward slash images. And then it's going to be icon dot PNG. Close that. Then we're also going to have our text component. And we're actually going to let the caller of this component specify what the text should be. So we'll uh, say text there and that will be passed via props. So we can go up to uh, where we're actually setting up our component. And we'll use some destructuring up here to actually access text. And then we're also going to have an on press which will be called when uh, this touch below opacity is pressed. So we can pass that on to the touch below opacity. So we've got the basic structure set up. Um, you can see we're getting these errors up here. So let's go ahead and add our prop types just so we know what exactly we're supposed to pass to it. So we can say clear button dot prop types. And that's going to be equal to text. That's going to be prop types dot string. And then on press is going to be prop types dot func. Save this. And now we can actually go ahead and try to render it. Uh, it's not going to be pretty since we don't have any styles, but we'll be able to actually see what we're working on now. So we'll import this from buttons. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and rename this as well to buttons because it could have multiple different types of buttons in there. Uh, save that, and then let's go ahead and actually render this. 
So below the input buttons, we're going to say clear button. And like I said before, we're going to have two props passed to it. And the first one's going to be text. And we can check here. It's going to be reverse currencies. And then the on press is going to be this dot handle swap currency. And then we'll go ahead and just set this up so that it's all good to go up here. Um, and we'll just say console.log press swap currency. So saving this, we should now actually see uh, the actual button down here. And if we tap it, you can see that uh, it becomes more opaque when we tap it. And that's because of the touch will opacity. But it's clearly not set up the way we actually want it to look in the end. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and apply back in our clear button.js. We'll apply some styles to it. We'll just add the different style uh, properties first before we actually start defining them. So we'll say style is equal to styles.container. Then we're also going to have on this view uh, the styles.wrapper. The image, we'll just say style is equal to styles.icon. And finally, for the text, we will say style is equal to styles.text. So all of those are set up so we can just start adding the styles in that we need. Um, so inside of here, we know we've got container, we've got wrapper, icon, and finally text. So working down from the top, first thing we're going to say uh, for this container is the line item center, and that'll just uh, center things for us. Make sure to put that S, it's a line item. Not... And then inside of our wrapper, we're going to go ahead and set the flex direction to row. That's so the elements inside of it, so the icon and the text display side by side rather than on top of each other as it is now. And then we also want to give it the align items center. And that's going to, uh, since we're switching the flex direction, align items is actually now going to align things vertically for us. Check this out. And we can see that the elements are vertically aligned and they're side by side now. Now we can go ahead and set up the icon. The icon we're gonna, going to set a width and that's going to be 19 and the margin right and that'll be 11. Uh, toy around with those values however you think it looks best in your application. Then for the text we're going to go ahead and set up the color and as before we actually have this white color variable available to us uh, from the actual global React Native Extended Style Sheet variables. We'll set the font size that can be 14 and the font weight will go a bit lighter here and say 300 and finally let's just make sure this button is plenty big um, just so there's plenty of area to actually touch so we'll say a padding vertical of 20 just about there but you can see that we're, get, we're getting that image clipping that we had before when we actually worked on the logo so if you remember if we go back to the uh, clear button we can actually specify how that image should, should be resized since we're not using the native native image size. Uh, so we can say resize mode and then we're going to set that to contain. Save that and you can see that now we've got this icon down here um, and if we compare that to our mockups here should be good to go and if you're running on Android you'll be seeing the exact same thing. Everything works the same on iOS and Android it's just a lot easier for me to only show it on iOS which is why the reason why I'm only showing it on one platform but if you're running on Android, no worries. Everything's going to look the same here. I've tested everything will work out the same.